Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm sharing with you my own process within my web design agency as to how you can go about onboarding clients. Now I'm talking about the process between when a client says, yes, I'd love to work with you, to then getting paid, getting your contract signed and getting all the information that you need in order to complete the project. Now before we dive onto the screen, let me know in the comments how you guys are getting on with your onboarding process and whether you're having any struggles or challenges or whether you are using software and finding it really, really useful. Let me know down below. Also, there is a new Facebook group if you wanna be a part of that. It's just a community of like-minded people, all of which use Elementor to build their websites and run his successful web design business. So if that sounds interesting to you, there is a link down below, go and check that and uh, get access to the group. Now I'd really appreciate it if you like the video, smash that like button, it really helps the YouTube algorithm and gets my content out to more and more people. So without further ado, let's dive onto the screen. Now I'm not really a fan of doing presentations, but I've got a presentation style format here for you. Uh, I found it was actually the best way to sort of uh, articulate what I was trying to tell you, get all the information down, and then I'll break out and show you uh, exactly what I do for each of these steps. So the four main ways here to onboard a client, we've got your invoicing, so essentially the most important part, which is getting paid. You should never work on a project unless you are paid. No one wants to work for free, so that is first and foremost the most important step. Step number two, equally as important, I would say, is getting a contract or service agreement signed. Uh, I've recently been bitten in the ass by trusting someone that I'd worked with before, not giving them a service agreement. Um, there was a little bit of a fuck up um, somewhere along the process, uh, and now I don't have a leg to stand on because there was no agreement in place. So yeah, even if it's a friend or family member, always put a service agreement or contract in place. Uh, third, we've got collecting business information. So we will touch more on this, but essentially this just covers all of the information that you need in order to get the project done. So that includes business information, their logos, brand uh, information, images, uh, all of that stuff. And I'll give you an example of how I go about collecting that. And then finally, we just send them a nice welcome email saying, welcome, welcome to the business, super excited to work with you. Uh, and then you kind of remind them that they need to sign the invoice, uh, sorry, pay the invoice, sign the contract, and fill out the questionnaire. Uh, so very easy four-step process. So process number one, invoicing. So as I've already touched on here, it is the most, most important. Honestly, guys, no one wants to work for free. I personally wouldn't start a project without getting paid. And I always, always, always take a deposit. Um, I think it, it's great because not only does it secure your time, it actually tells you that the customer is uh, legit and you know they are gonna follow through. You know, they've invested 50% into the project, so the chances are they're gonna pay the remaining 50% to get the website. Likewise, on, on you know, on the flip side, you've taken 50% of the projects and you're invested in getting that project completed, which sounds like a no-brainer, but I've come across a lot of designers that kind of like the chase and like the thrill. They they get the project in and they just piss about and actually don't really deliver a good good service or actually an, an, a good end result. Um, so yeah, I think a deposit is a great way of, of creating that balance. So finally, step here is use an invoicing payment tool like Stripe. So I personally use Stripe and I use other invoicing tools. Stripe is just one of them. It allows me to send uh, one automated payments and also I can use it for international payments, which is really useful and they can pay on card. So let's just break out of here now and I'm gonna go to stripe.com and if you're not sure what Stripe is, it's just stripe.com. Here it's literally one of the biggest UK payment gateways now alongside sort of PayPal. Uh, so very, very trusted, absolutely recommend it. So we're gonna sign in. The easiest process to get through this is essentially to go to customers and then you wanna click invoices. And then from here, just click click new invoice. All right, cool. So first of all, we need to add a customer. And actually this turns out to be a fairly decent customer uh, relationship manager or CRM because we've got all of our customer information in here. Um, so albeit, what we need to do is click find or add customer add new customer and what you want to do is add all of the customer information in here 
uh, fill it out as best as you possibly can. If there's anything that you don't know, it will, they will have the opportunity to fill that in once they add the payment method. Uh, so yeah, don't worry too much about that, but add the customer. So I'm just gonna put testing here, a at a.com. I don't know whether it will allow this. Cool, so we've got a testing customer in there. So now what we can do is we can find or add a product. So if you have a fixed website design package, uh, you could add that as a product and then you could just click inside here and add it. Uh, so we have Williams International Real Estate website here, 50% deposit. Uh, so this is one that I obviously recently took uh, for a basic website. So yeah, once you've clicked that and you've added it, you would just go down uh, payment method wise, so we're going to email the invoice to the customer to pay manually and what I do is always change that to, to one day. Um, you can't set it to zero but essentially what I'm saying is you need to pay uh, pretty much immediately and in the email which is step four I then say uh, make sure you get the invoice paid in order to secure that time so we essentially won't start working on this until you've paid uh, which kind of like you know kicks our ass and gets a gear, gets it paid uh, and so it's a win-win. Um, once you're ready, click send invoice and it's going to send that invoice out uh, automatically to the customer and the email address that you've put in. All right, so step two is the service agreement. So I can't stress how important it is, guys, to have a service agreement with any single project that you're working on, no matter if it's friends or family. Uh, this contract will save you, trust me. So the service agreement essentially covers um, who's involved, so parties involved, yourself, uh, your company, and the company that you are working with. The deliverables of the project, so what is it exactly that you are going to do for this business? Uh, the delivery dates, so when can they expect it by? Uh, payment information, and what they want to do if uh, they want to cancel, or even if you want to cancel, you know, you can fire a client, uh, so you just have to cover what uh, the correct information in there. So I've got here in uh, commas, or oh, speech marks, sorry, contract killer. Um, so this isn't a um, uh, like an assassin or anything like that. This is a, a, the name of a contract template, which I know a lot of web design freelancers use, and it's actually one that I've used and adapted myself. Um, so I'm gonna show you that now. Uh, and then what you wanna do is use a digital signature software uh, in order to automatically send that contract to the customer. I mean, guys, we're in a, we're in 2020, uh, we're in 2021, sorry. There's no point printing a contract out, sending it in the post, getting them to sign it and send it back. Uh, so we can actually achieve all of this pretty quickly using digital signature software. So I'm gonna show you what I use as well. So let's break out of here. So here I'm just gonna search web design contract killer, like so. And here it is from stuff and stuff and nonsense. So we're going to click inside there, and here we go. This is essentially the contract that I am referring to. Okay, so what you can do is copy all of this information, put it into a word document or whatever uh, text editor that you're using, uh, and basically update it where required. So just to show you what mine looks like, it looks like this. I've got a tiny bit of branding up in the top corner. Like it's so simplistic. I've kept this so so minimal it doesn't need to be flashy um, but I mean by all means brand it so we're just saying it's a service agreement I like using the word service agreement rather than contract I think service agreement is uh, a much nicer tone of voice uh, and that basically a couple of things that we need to change is you need to put your business name in and this is always going to be changed when you um, put the business name of the business that you're working with uh, sorry bit of a tongue twister uh, so a couple of other areas that I just want to bring to your attention. This here is something else that you would need to change. So business name would be the client that you're working with. This I've left blank and I'll show you why in a second. Again, this here you need to change to the company name. So we're going to produce a new website to advertise the company name business. Uh, so the company's business. Uh, add or remove any of uh, the information in here to suit the project that you are delivering. And then we say for the total amount of, and then you would put the price of the project in here. Uh, so uh, outlined in our previous correspondence, so you've obviously already discussed the price, negotiated, uh, both agreed or whatever, um, but the contract is just solidifying that price. And then we would scroll right down to the bottom. And then basically here is where you would again change the business name. 
and you would leave these blank and we can fill these in using our digital signature. So digital signature wise, what I use is a tool called HelloSign and I think it's like $10 a month. Like it's it's really quite affordable and if you're sending out hopefully two, three uh, web design contracts a month, uh, you know, fingers crossed, uh, there's no reason why you can't be achieving that, then that $10 a month is, is fuck all. Like it's it's incredibly cheap and cost effective when you're starting out even if you are not yet securing um, you know, multiple clients a month then even if you have one the ten dollars is completely offset in the price of the project so I definitely recommend it so what we do is log in so for here what you want to do is click sign or send and then we need to upload our file So one thing I didn't mention is in terms of my process, what I do is edit this uh, contract or service agreement in Microsoft Word, then I export it as a PDF, and then I can upload it as a PDF like so. So once this has uploaded, what you wanna do is click Next. So you would add the name of the signer, so I'm just gonna put uh, Business Rep. So, um, whoever is the contact that you are contacting. Again, I'm just gonna put a at a.com here. Uh, you would put their email address in, and that is the email address that's gonna send the contract to. So I would recommend same as the email address that you use within Stripe, just for consistency, so it all goes to the same place. Click Next. Cool, so this is the awesome part. This is where we need to place the fields. Okay, so you'll notice here that I've got a couple of lines. So this is where I get them to put their address in. Uh, so at this stage, you might not know what their address is. And actually, one thing I found is it's a bit of a pain in the ass to contact them and say, hey, what's your address? It kind of just adds that extra step in them changing their mind for whatever reason and pulling out of the project. So uh, I, I leave an empty field in here, which is a text box, drag that in, pull it full width, and here we can just say um, address, like so. Uh, and then what you can do is you can add another one if you wish. Uh, on the second line, it gives them the opportunity to um, gives them the opportunity to put as much information in as they need. Some businesses have a long address. Uh, so imagine all of this is all filled out and we're going to scroll right to the bottom and here's the the most important part is you would click signature oh, click signature on here uh, and th this would be me so I've got a signature in here saved if you haven't you would create one and it would save it for every time that you need to sign a document yourself which is great and then I'm going to put date in here drag that in so I'm gonna put that as me, and it's gonna put the day that you sign it in, which is great. And then we're gonna drag a signature field for the other, uh, so business name. So by business name, I mean the business that you are sending this contract to. It's gonna assign it to the user or the representative that we put in in the previous step. And then again, we would just put date signed, and these two fields are what they're gonna fill in when they sign the contract. So we just click next. Give this a, a, a title such as um, website service agreement, for example. You have the option to add a message. I tend to uh, tend to not, and I just leave it with the title, and it will send that off. And then you just put send for signature, and it's going to get that sorted for you. So step three is having this questionnaire. Now, this questionnaire is more important than many. Now, stage, step number. Now step number three is having a fairly robust questionnaire that is gonna gather all of the information that you need about the business, about their brand, any of the assets, and everything that you need in order to do the project well. So I like to call this a centralized location for client information because the more customers that you have do this, you can always refer back to these documents at any point, pull out any information that you need uh, between now and any time in the future. 
Uh, so we're collecting things like business details, their branding, images, uh, anything that they, uh, any sources of inspiration that they have, so any websites that they've seen uh, that would be useful to you in order to deliver a project that they're happy with, uh, and any login details to uh, any login details to applications that are required, such as whether it's their hosting or uh, their existing WordPress website and things like that. And what we do is we deliver all of this within a Google form, uh, so we can send them a link they can fill it out and it gets emailed to us and we can then go onto Google Drive and see all of the entries within our form submissions at any point from any of the businesses that we've signed up. So let me just quickly show you what this looks like for me. Okay, so here we have a Google form. Uh, so it's very nice and organized. So if I just scroll down, we've got um, basic information like the email address, business name, business address, contact names. So this information you'll probably already know, but it doesn't hurt to ask it again and just have it all centralized in one location. Um, next point, we've got website details. So I'm collecting any branding, uh, any website logos. Uh, if they don't have branding, uh, what font should we use? Uh, now nine times out of 10, they'll just say, do as you please if they don't have any branding. Um, it, Tell us also what colors we should use, um, any website text content. So if they're writing the copy, we need them to supply that to us. Or if they need you to write the copy, um, then obviously they don't need to do that. Um, provide a Google Drive uh, with any uh, assets such as logos, images, videos, anything that they want included on the site. We can do that here as well. Show us any links of websites that they like. Uh, do they need website hosting? So that's obviously important. Um, Next, we've got understanding their business. So getting an insight into their competitors. And again, this is something that you would have already touched on uh, within the discovery call or um, the consultation call. But again, it doesn't hurt to have it all centralized in one place so you can refer back to it. You know, As business owners, we talk to a lot of different businesses uh, and it can kind of get uh, a little bit confusing if you don't quite remember exactly what that person said and you haven't managed to make notes. It's always great to have it in this form. So we've got a list of master URLs, so anything that they feel is relevant, such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you know, being able to link to the social channels within the website is gonna be useful. Uh, logins and passwords, uh, so again, I'm touching on WordPress or hosting and things like that. Uh, and I've got Slack emails here because anyone that I sign up within the business, I tend to enroll into Slack so we can have open dialogue and open communication with them, with myself, with the other team members if required, so. Yeah, by all means, that's something extra that you can add in. I'm not covering it here today, but it is something that I include within this process. So yeah, that is the Google form in a nutshell. That's the information that I'm asking the customer to send over to me, and I can have it in a centralized location. So the final step is wrapping everything that we've just covered up and sending over a nice welcome email. And actually for me, I like to keep this email nice and short and sweet. Uh, I appreciate that a lot of business owners don't have a lot of time. Um, but what I'm basically doing is I'm saying welcome to the team. We're, we're super excited to be working with you and we're really excited to get stuck into this project. I then give them a heads up and say, you should have received a contract from, and I use the word hello sign because that's my digital signature app. If you're using another one, then just let them know where it's coming from. And then I say, all, all you need to do is go in there, make sure you're happy with it and sign it and send it back. Also, I let them know that there is a 50% invoice for the deposit. I, need, I tell them that they need to pay that in order to secure our time within the company to work on their project. And this, as I said earlier, often gives them a little bit of a kick up the ass that they need in order to get the payment over to you swiftly and get the project going because they wanna get things going and you essentially just wanna get paid and make sure that, that commitment is there. So guys, that's essentially it. Go and get it, get going. That is my four step process in how I, within my business, go and onboard a client from them saying yes to getting all the information that you need in order to get the project started. So I've had really good feedback on this in saying how uh, easy and simple this onboarding process is. Uh, I like to keep things as simple as possible. So by all means, take inspiration from this, start utilizing this within your onboarding process if you like. As I said in the beginning, I'm not claiming that this is the best approach out there. I know there's other softwares available. Uh, Hello Bonsai is, is a great one for freelancers, um, but it just depends on where you're at within your web design or freelance journey. If you are not in a position where you wanna be paying a 20 to $30 monthly commitment, then by all means use this because it's very, very cost effective. So guys, if you like this video, 
please hit the thumbs up button because it will help the YouTube algorithm and help other people find my content. Also hit the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate all the support that you are giving. There's going to be loads of other videos like this coming where I touch more on in depth of the process that I follow within my business and how I'm managing to run a successful agency at the moment. So guys, that's all I've got for you for now and I will see you in the next video.